So Martin from Preact again. Uh, it's just a short video on a Dynamics a customer service. Um, I'm just going to show you briefly around how this is used from a customer service standpoint. We're looking at the customer service hub here. Um, obviously, if you're interested in sales, you know this can feed into sales. This can also feed into field service. We have a few other videos on those as well. So if you check out our YouTube channel, you'll be able to see those. Um, but customer service hub, what is it? Why do people use it? You know, how is it made up? It's basically for anyone who's logging complaints, tickets, cases, call it what you like. Out of the box, these are called cases. Um, in the system, um, tracking our communication with the client around this problem, getting to a point where we can then resolve this. Whether that's us resolving ourselves or having to escalate to another engineer if we need to, using routing rules and things like that. So it's quite common that when a customer service agent logs in, they typically start with a dashboard. So out of the box with the customer service hub, we get a couple of these dashboards that you can see here. It's just a way of me managing streams. So I can see these are my active cases, you know, based on this period that we're looking at over here. I've got two active cases in this period. I can click on here. I could quite easily create a new case from the dashboard if I need to, or if I wanted to go into one of these and, and start working this, I can click into the case from the dashboard. I need to go back. I can click on here as well. We've got my resolve cases any emails that I might be due to send out. We've got a list of all my activities as well. It's a couple of nice other visual filters as well that we can apply at the top here. So cases by origin, cases by account, cases by status. Obviously these change based on the periods that we're in, whether it's this week, whether we have a custom time frame. Last quarter, you can see the values are changing accordingly. Um, there's a second tier dashboard in here as well, which a lot of people like. It's just with a, a few of these roll up figures that it's quite useful to see, you know, if you're an agent, where you're at and what you're doing basically. Um, and if you really wanted to and you didn't like the out of the box dashboards that come with this, you can see there are very different very op variations and options in here. Or you can embed your own Power BI report. If you've already got Power BI Pro licenses, there's no reason why you couldn't generate your own report like this. Case summary report. And this just gives you a bit more slicing and dicing. So you click into different areas you can then see the values changing based on what you're actually filtering the data out. It could then reference individual cases that are in your system um, or something down here like this where you can see cases by geographical location, by individual person, you know, things like that. It's just a, it's a nice variation and a different type of dashboard. It's Power BI that we can embed into here. Um, you're probably asking, you know, where do cases come from? How are cases created? As I said, somebody might phone in you can then obviously you know look for their account information up here and then go and raise the case from the account if you're doing something in the background you can click on the little plus here and then click create a case that will then load up this what we call a quick create case form you can then find the customer if i say sandra what is it it's an issue with something blah 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 you can then go and create the case from here click save and close that case will go in your list or if you've chose to change this box here signed to others that will go in their list as well but it enables you to then just carry on what you're doing in the background about losing your changes basically the other option is obviously then to have emails coming into a central mailbox they can go into a queue down here so you might have a support queue like this and then an individual user can go in here they can pick it from a queue you can see and then over here if i pick this one from the queue you can then see against that yeah do you want to remove it from the queue yeah no you can see then when somebody's looking at this, we can see that this agent's then working on it. Obviously then once that person's finished with it, they might need to release it back to a queue. We can click release here. That then goes back into the queue for somebody else to then pick up and work if they need to. Equally, um, you might choose to um, create this from sentiment in an email. So up here we have this relationship assistant and it analyzes the context of emails that will be coming into mailboxes. So in this scenario, I've got an individual mail, an email into me as a, an individual user. Um, you can see issue detected in an email. If I expand that, Sandra saying she's got an issue with this individual product. Um, I can click into it. That will load up the email for me and I can see all the details around it. And you can see it's now tracked to Dynamics. Um, equally, I can expand this. So we just click on that one there. I can see the details of it. If I don't click into it and click that, it won't open it. But from here, I can actually click Create Case. So you can see response to complaint saying he wasn't happy with something last week. From here, I can click create case, take the subject line and then fill in the case title. Again, by default, sign it to the user that's doing it. 
and then you can go through and customize and change this whole form that you're seeing here and have different fields if you need to and make some mandatory or not if you don't need to um, but again it's another way of creating a case from a sentiment of an email that you might have received into the database equally if i click over here into my outlook you can see i've got that email the same email you can see it's in my inbox just leave that page you can see that email's there that's what it was analyzing because it's logged in as me you know all being in office 365 it's looking at me logged in as a user and it's analyzing my mailbox and it's telling me i've got those emails in the system seamlessly integrates um, and then from here obviously i can go here and see the details and i could go and create a case from this i've got one here from leanne it looks like she's referencing a an order number that she's previously had with us and she's got a problem with this mower by the looks of it so from here i can go through and i can click new record down here i'm sorry go to cases again you can customize what records you can create from an email if i click cases here i could link this to an existing case by searching for the case number by the case title or if it doesn't exist i can click here look new case that will then create a brand new case for me um, case title um, let's just call it mower problem customer again if it's a recently viewed item it would appear in here equally you can then go and search for the customer i'm just going to pick the individual in this scenario so that's leanne there again you might want to if this is a company you've filled in then you might want to fill in the individual contact here as well oh i don't want to pick contacts i haven't picked the company um let's change that let's call it i know she works for lewis enterprises so i can pick lewis enterprises there and then i can pick leanne here as the individual person there we go so we've got lou lewis enterprises and leanne that works there case type we've got different options in here so i'm going to say it's a problem and the subject you can have a subject tree as well so i pick problem then you know what type of problem is it well actually it might be faulty product or equipment you know you can have different options and different sort of you know subcategories of this tree if you need to i'm just going to pick hardware for now um, origin you can say it came via email product i could go and look for that product if i need to and there's a few other things that you can do in here as well but essentially you can fill out a few basic fields from an email that comes into your individual inbox if you're not managing that through the mailboxes that are going into your queues already like you just saw and then you can see look successfully tracked and we can see over here against the email is tracked dynamics what that now means is you can see here we've got this case I've got a unique case reference number from outlook i can then go and click view in dynamics like so that will then load up and it will take me straight into that individual case and it will take me into that individual record and then on the timeline in the middle here you can see there's that email that emails now come across equally if you didn't want to do that and you wanted to actually go back to your your actual database and you click on say cases for example like this you can see each time you go into these different areas we've got a nice view in here a dynamic query so this is looking at all active cases that are with the customer service team for some reason we might have had to assign it to that team somebody can then go here and assign it to themselves from there or apply a routing rule based on the values that are in here you know you might have an agent that works better with stuff that will come via the web and then we can apply a routing rule here and look at all of our logic in the background that you guys can set up from the outset and it applies that and assigns that to the relevant team member um, equally if i went to say active cases like this there's physically 79 active cases in the system we've got an sla which we'll come on to in a second we can see we've got a nice status here but we've also got these charts as well and these will all feed into dashboards if you need them so when we look at this view here we can see that there are 79 cases in the list i can see look cases by agent i can see 27 are with martin 7 are with mark peter has 12 and so on and so on you can change this and say okay you know by origin so what is the split of these out of these 79 i can see 33 have come via the phone 29 are via the web four are from twitter three haven't been filled in and, and nine are from email again it just helps you with reporting elements and things like that um but again we've got cases here if i wanted to then find that case we've got another view here look cases opened in the last seven days so when i go in here ah oh, there it is look no problem i can see the sla is currently in progress it's an active case you know it's came via email and it's with that company again when we look at that company if we click into it we'd see the case sitting against that record as well so from a organization point of view you'd see this but if i just click into the case here now like i said before we've got this process flow that we can then go through we've got a timer ticking down here because we've got service level agreements set up in the background my agreement is based on this just being a normal priority email i've said i want four hours to reply to this 
Now, what is my reply? Well, you know, I've got this set of questions I need to fill out. Just pop that out and show you that on the right hand side. You can have whatever fields you need to ask in here. So at this point, you might need to ask different issues, um, different questions relating to different problems. You can see because I categorized this as problem when I created it from that original email, I might say actually it's a request. And you can see what this will then do is it will change the way the route that we go down basically. So it might be that based on a request, we need to then send you some material or we need to ask you different questions. It'll go down a completely different route. Same thing if I go back to question, it's the same thing there. But obviously, you know, a problem goes down a separate route. We need to investigate the problem as opposed to probably just sending you information. So we've got all of this, this stuff here. Um, we can then fill out all these details, you know, ship fire, BPD, whatever it is, click next stage. We're now at investigation stage. And now, of course, you can see I'm asking for, you know, this is just part of our process saying, well, what product is it? What is the model number? Have I got a serial number? Now, I might not know that. So at this point, I might need to arrange a phone call to call this client back. From the timeline, I can click on here and I can schedule a phone call. You can see, you know, it's all about issue with Moa. There we go. And I can say, okay, I'm gonna set this for say tomorrow and set it for tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock, click save and close. I can fill out any other fields in here that I need to as well, but you're building up a bit of a picture. So anyone looking at this now tomorrow in my absence, if I can't make it into the office for any reason, um, they can physically pick this up in my absence and they can see, okay, well, there was the original email. That was the context of it. And I can see Martin's now got a follow-up phone call tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. That would also go into my activity list over here as well if I needed it to. Um, and then, of course, I can pick this up. I can go into this tomorrow morning and I can then start going, yeah, spoke to Leanne about this, that and the other. Um, I'm, I'm going to send her some further instructions, blah, blah, blah. So I can then complete this off with all of my notes, which are then attached to this. It's now gone in as a completed phone call. It's a closed phone call with all of my notes added against this. If I just refresh this up here, what we will then see, you can see we've now got succeeded on our SLA. Perfect. So I've deemed an SLA first response to be an outbound phone call that has been actioned and has been completed. You set your own parameters around that. That might be an outgoing email might be a follow-up appointment but it's basically saying that our SLA has now succeeded and again if we come back over here and we look at say our teams here look you can see nice little tick here on the SLA status to say it's been succeeded brilliant again just helps with reports you know if that had got to say three hours then we could send a nice gentle reminder to the case agent or their line manager to say this hasn't been actioned yet do something with it you can set your own values up against the SLAs if you need to but what might be quite useful is to actually come over here you can see we've got knowledge base articles so you know how to track an email how to reset your password you might have one in here how to fix a lawnmower for example then you might want to pull that into the actual case itself we look at one of these when we go into these knowledge base articles it's a title it's got some keywords it's got a description down here I've embedded a nice video that people could then see you know and they might follow the instructions in a video if we keep coming down and I'm saying okay have you tried this this is how you add the app to your Outlook. It's instructions that are gonna go out to the client. Now we can come over here and we can search for these to see what it is. Equally, if I just click on the back option here, and again, I go back to this case, we've got the ability over here to click on the option here that says, go and search for that title and find any relevant articles. Now I haven't got an article from a problem, so it hasn't found any. But now we know for well that we've got one in here for tracking emails. So I could put one of those keywords in here like this. Um, just do um, email, something like that, and click search. And it will go away and it will search for all of those records. And you can see now it's found this keyword in one of those articles. At this point, I can then say, okay, is that going to fix the problem or is it that one? I could then click on the little link option here and that will link it over here as a a linked article so somebody again picking this up in my absence will be able to say okay this might fix your problem I can click on the little pop out here that will show me in more detail what the instructions are that go into this video what I'm what am I sending to the client I could print this off if I need to from here I can say yeah the article was helpful or it wasn't perfect that then helps with analytics against individual articles as well but going back here I probably want to email the client this so I can click on the little email option here and what it does is it then loads up an email template in the database 
it fills in the subject line that's coming from the, the article and it's filling in our body of our email of all the details we've got in there. Perfect. All I need to then do is click send from here. Once I've cast my over it, I might change the subject line and a few other things. This will now get sent out to the client. But what it's equally going to then do is it feeds it in on the timeline. So we can see there's the original email. I've then had that phone call. I've then sent you this email. Because we've sent it from the database, and you could go in here and you can click new email here as well, like so. And then you could compose your own email without having to pull in the context of a, you know, an article. You could just go in here and fill in all your details like that with your signature and everything else against it. You can insert a knowledge article from there and any other templates that you might have will be predefined in the system and any attachments. So if it doesn't exist, then you can almost go and create your own anyway and click send. But effectively, you are going to be sending out emails, having phone calls against this and you'll have a timeline. Once we've sent the things out against the timeline, against here, we can search for keywords. So if I search for Moa, for example, like that, it will return all results within this because it could be this takes six months to get a resolution for this problem. Um, we might find that there's loads of different things in here, tasks, emails, phone calls, and any of those activities that you can see here, basically. So we were looking for key information. We can search for keywords on our timeline. Really useful, really helpful. Um, it's also quite useful when somebody's picking this up in your absence that they have to go through and look for, okay, what happened there? Oh, and then what was the context of that phone call? I've got to expand it. What was the details you sent out? I've got to expand that as well. Now we've got this option here. If I click collapse that, it closes all the records and when I want to get a picture of what's happening on the timeline, you know, phone call after email and everything else, we click expand here. This then expands all of those details and then we just scroll through and we're getting an idea of what's happened and where we're at on this case. Once we're happy with all of that, then of course we can go in here and fill in all of our products. Let's just say it was a product, there you go, it's that one now, you imagine that's our mower. And it's product model number one, two, three, four, five serial number one two three four five or something like that again you fill in all your other fields here these fields will be specific to yourselves and the process flow will be as well click next stage like so we're then going to get to a resolution point now it might have been that you've added in here again let me just add something else in here quickly with some duration there's 30 minutes against that there was 30 minutes against the phone call um, we've had an email trail as well um, i might do had to um, explore internally so it might have been i had to do some internal you know things and let's just say i've then completed that off but it was 30 minutes you get the principle here we've added some time in against the task as well as a phone call i've now completed that task off when we get to the end of this and we finish this you can see we've got a few other options in as well we can do save and route to different people we can assign it to different members we can release this to a queue that people are managing over here but we've got to the point of going, okay, we've got a resolution now. We've, we've, we've got all the context here. Well, let's resolve the case. By doing so, you can see it's giving you this roll-up value here. So of all of the things that we've done, all of those tasks, all of those phone calls, all of those emails, and everything else is rolling in here, telling us that we've physically taken one and a half hours on this individual case. Again, you can set your resolution type. So I'm just going to say it's problem solved. I might have sent information that might have been a five minute exercise, but we still want to log this. I'm saying problem solved, normal priority, um, MOA fixed, whatever you want to do here, basically. And then you can add any other fields that you want to have down here that you need to report on after the case has been closed as well, if you need to. Click save and close like so. And then this becomes read only. This is now a resolved case. It's read only. We can't now adjust anything in here. If we go back to our cases view over here, we've got this concept of my active cases. You can see here, look, my active cases, my resolved cases. If I click on my resolved cases and I change this to be created on date, there it is, top of my list, it's now resolved. I succeeded my SLA, perfect. It's now in here under this view. Hopefully that was really useful for you guys. If you've got any questions around this, please feel free to get in touch with Preact We'll be more than happy to help you set up your case service hub for your organization.